second. Okay. Made so my name sound so fancy. <laughs> Sorry. Just as a design consultant and community builder who helps nonprofits and community groups create online and offline experiences that connect with real people in the real world. She started off as a volunteer with WOAP back in 2018 and is now helping us shape our messaging more intentionally as we grow. Jess also co-leads Open Oakland, an all-volunteer civic tech collective that bridges community, technology, and government for a more empowered and equitable Oakland. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Phoenix. Um, and thanks, everybody, for sticking around. I know it's a lot of Zoom for one day. Um, and I appreciate it, uh, and I'm excited uh, by how um, engaged everybody is in this work, and uh, I'm just honored to be part of it and really happy to be able to share a little bit uh, more about EIP's specific communication structure and sort of how EIP talks about the work that we do and um, uh, what that looks like on the ground. So I'm going to step back a little bit, and I'll just share my screen really quickly. Get you all into this. And can you all see my presentation? I'm going to assume that you get great. OK. Uh, I can't see my chat. So if there are questions that pop up in chat, Phoenix, if you want to holler out or uh, just sort of feed me stuff, that's that would be awesome. Thank you. Um, so I, I'm going to step back a little bit and um, kind of revisit some of the themes I think that we've touched on really throughout the day. Uh, so some of this stuff is gonna be familiar um, and, but I'm gonna try to do it from more of a um, EIP specific point of view and really talking about um, first how uh, EIP talks about the work itself and sort of what that approach looks like because it's really critical to um, getting the message out and, and being effective in how we communicate about uh, the plans that you're gonna be developing over the course of this program. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about how you actually do that and what that looks like kind of more practically speaking um, as you develop plans and as you start trying to build support out um, and, and get stuff implemented. Um, so there's really kind of three core pillars that, that we are using to talk about this work uh, in West Oakland. And how we talk about this stuff is still a work in progress, even 20 years into it. Um, and uh, but I'll break down, uh, like I said, a lot of the themes that we've already kind of touched on. And I think you'll start to see a lot of it come together. Um, so really, we're looking at creating a foundation uh, of the principles that we operate under. Um, and then looking at the history and context of the work and, and the issues uh, at hand, and then the methods that we use to actually do the work itself and the activities uh, that we execute. So I'll break down the, break these down a little bit. Um, and when Taryn gave us a really powerful presentation this morning around the context of climate change and the disparities that we see and how that unfolds. Um, and the and and you know I think we've everybody today has touched on these principles of environmental justice and um, what that means. And so this will be familiar to you, um, but really this, it's, you know, in the West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project is at its heart an environmental justice organization. And so uh, we're really working to make sure that everyone has the same degree of protection from environmental and health hazards, but it goes beyond just equal protection from the disparities, right? It's also access to the decision-making. So people in impacted communities obviously need to be part of the decision-making uh, that affects the policies and everything that result in this uh, environmental um, uh, impacts that we're experiencing. And of course, uh, it needs to be regardless of personal identity, regardless of race, color, national origin, income. These are things that we see, th these disparities we see built into the systems. And so environmental justice is really about breaking those down and being really explicit about that. Um, and this is you know, truly a foundational principle. And so I think for a lot of us, it may seem kind of obvious that this is an important value and, and foundation. Um, but as Kita kind of pointed out, it's not ubiquitous, it's not necessarily the norm. And so we need to make sure that we're really threading this uh, principle throughout everything that we do and how we talk about it uh, and making sure that we're establishing that baseline understanding of what we're actually trying to accomplish. Um, 
the second print pillar is really around um, history and context. And a lot of this, I'm not gonna give you a history of West Oakland. Uh, you know, we've talked about a number of different aspects of it, um, but um, it's obviously really important for us as we're developing new plans and creating new visions that we understand what has and hasn't worked in the past and how we got to where we are now. And so um, when we think about West Oakland's history, there's a lot of, there's been a lot of challenges and obstacles that have shaped what uh, West Oaklanders experience today, right? So, um, you know, we talked about segregation and redlining and those maps and how the maps really um, uh, uh, have sort of created this through line of environmental um, uh, uh, exposure and um, and the, how the zoning and regulation and enforcement over the years has added to that and sort of brought in uh, more industrialized businesses and trucking companies and stuff that are placed right where people are living and breathing. Um, and freeway construction, the Cypress Freeway that went up and split the neighborhood and actually displaced entire generations of West Oaklanders that are that have that are still impacted today. Um, and, and the decades of urban renewal and housing policy and everything. And so this is, a, I think, a, a lot of these themes are familiar to us. And, and certainly, um, you know, folks, as you all know, you're living with a lot of the repercussions of all of this. Um, but there is a really important counter narrative here uh, that I think is also really important to highlight. And as EIP has developed its solutions and it kind of and, and the organization continues to work with the community and collaborators to identify new solutions. Um, we really need to lean on that other that sort of counterpart of the neighborhood's history. And so again, you know, Taryn's like kind of a living example of this. Her family came from Texas, uh, relocated to Oakland and has lived in the city uh, for generations. Um, and that shift um, really brought a lot of economic power to the neighborhood, right? Um, West Oaklanders working in the railroads and the shipyards, um, that economic driver, those economic drivers are really powerful and, and really inform not just the Bay Area, but the whole country. Uh, and that really is, I think, really important to, to acknowledge. Um, and then, you know, over the decades, and Keita talked about this too, like, and, um, this idea of uh, the Black Panthers and and you know the community stepping up and uh, you know providing healthcare and food and security uh, when the systems and institutions would not uh, and and that's that sort of uh, you know mutual aid and uh, and self help um, is a core part of the neighborhood and, and goes way back. Um, and, and really creates this cultural resilience, right? This fabric um, that, that really defines the neighborhood. And when we look at these narratives, it's not an either or, right? There are some times when we're gonna really wanna focus on the obstacles and the, um, the negative impacts that have shaped this, the neighborhood. And there are other times when we're gonna need to really lean on uh, this counter narrative of the strengths and resiliency of the community uh, in order to transform that history into something completely new and different. Um, and so this is really a sort of and also narrative and so when you're thinking about these, when you, you know, as you're developing your plans going forward and as you're communicating about them and as you're telling your own stories uh, about sort of what you think these solutions look like, uh, we just want to encourage you to think about that sort of balance and sort of how you, how and when you focus on different elements of that history and context and bring that into your planning process. Um, and then the third pillar is really around uh, sort of how do we do this work? And that is focused, like really, really rooted in self-determination, right? And um, this idea that impacted communities know what's best for them. Uh, this is um, at the heart of everything EIP does. Um, and it looks, you know, uh, Keita mentioned a few different frameworks um, and uh, EIP focuses really heavily on participatory research and collaborative problem solving. And you'll be learning a lot about those techniques and methods over the course of the coming months. Um, 
But for EIP, this looks this has looked uh, has taken very specific shape, right? And so it's really about um, the community defining its own indicators uh, for what is a quality of life, and not leaning on sort of outside quote unquote experts for that. Um, and filling in gaps where there are gaps, because there are often gaps in communities um, that have been historically marginalized, right? And so um, being able to collect our own data and, and, you know, EIP has that long history of doing that and the owning our air plan is a direct result of that work. Um, and really uh, seeing that uh, West Oakland was sort of being overlooked or lumped into this idea of the larger city that somehow, you know, uh, you know, if, if air quality levels in the city were overall okay, then that must be true for West Oakland as well when people in the neighborhood knew full well that that wasn't uh, accurate. And so filling in those gaps. And then of course, building out, or building out resources and tools to help people do that um, and, and developing leadership skills within the community so that, the, um, so that folks can you know, teach ourselves, teach each other. Um, and, and I think you all embody this completely, right? This is exactly what you're doing now. Um, and of course, holding, uh, holding those who have power accountable um, and making sure that they are answering for the decisions that they make. And then ultimately shifting that power. Um, and this is where a lot of that collaborative problem solving comes into play. So really making sure that uh, the communities who are most impacted by these decisions and these policies uh, are actually at the table and actually have an influence and, and, um, and share power with the policymakers, et cetera. Oops. Um, so that's sort of like the core structure for how we kind of think about talking about EIP's work. Um, but how that looks practically is a little bit, uh, it depends on the context and it depends on what it is you're trying to communicate. Um, and I, this is probably a little bit, um, you know, I tried to keep this part a little not too detailed because I think as you start to develop plans and you'll figure out ways to talk about it and sort of as you start to create content to support that and reach out to people and build support, um, this stuff, these are some like kind of basic principles you can apply to that. But really um, what we're talking about is, you know, anytime you have a really complex topic, it can be really easy to want to throw everything into one communications piece or one message. And, you know, as we saw with those air plans that, um, or the, the, uh, the plant community plans that Kita shared, they're pretty in depth, right? They're huge and they're chunky and they're beefy. And it's really hard for somebody to sit down and read a 90 page deck uh, in one shot. And so how do we surface those messages and, and break them up into sort of more digestible chunks of content when we're communicating with people in different in different places and at different points in the process. Um, and, and really it all kind of boils down as to just what is that one thing? What's the key takeaway somebody needs to know uh, at any given time? And so that might be an action that you want them to take, something specific you want them to do. It might be um, a piece of knowledge or uh, understanding that they didn't have before that they need in order to uh, um, take that action, uh, or it might be a belief or sort of an attitude or uh, attitude change, like a, a shift in their perception that you want to make. And so being able to identify sort of what is that thing you're trying to, to um, share out or communicate is going to make you a lot more effective as you develop the content to support it. Um, which of course really means understanding who you're talking to. Um, and You'll be working with, I think, a lot of different kinds of people in this program. Um, you know, you'll be, I mean, you're already talking to folks in the city, you're talking to folks, uh, you know, scientists and academics, you're talking to your neighbors. Um, and so understanding, uh, you know, who those different groups are um, and, and how they think about these issues is going to be really important. Um, and so just understanding sort of how do they identify, um, what do they already know about the subject that you're talking about? So maybe they don't have any understanding and you need to actually do more work to help give them that bigger context or foundational knowledge, or maybe they're experts and you need to skip ahead to the nitty gritty detail stuff because that's all they really care about. So being able to know that going into a conversation or into a communication, whether it's on social media or a report or whatever is gonna be super helpful. Um, and then also understanding what's getting in their way 
So um, I think we often forget like, oh, you know, if they just knew that this was important, uh, they would go along with it. But there's often obstacles, and this is especially true in city planning, right? Um, there's a lot of bureaucracy, uh, budgets, time constraints, approvals, public perception, all of this stuff. And sort of understanding what those obstacles are for people uh, and for different people, because it's going to be different depending on, you know, who the decision maker is or, who, you know, who the, um, who the audience is. But understanding what's getting in their way is going to help you to, to break that down a little and be able to find solutions that speak more directly to their concerns. Um, so once you sort of know who you're talking to and who you want to communicate with and what it is you're trying to communicate, we kind of go back to this idea of, um, of that foundational principle, right? So we want to ladder people into knowledge that makes sense for them. Um, so uh, at the sort of bottom of the ladder, that first rung is really about establishing those foundational principles and sort of agreed understandings, uh, agreed on understandings, what we're actually talking about or what our, um, uh, what our sort of core principles are. Um, and then, whoop, and then as you go up the ladder, uh, you know, you might unfold more context and give them a little bit more detail. Uh, or, and then, you know, so on and so forth until you get to the top where you're really looking at this big picture uh, vision. So what is, what, it, what is it you're actually trying to accomplish? Um, and the thing with the ladder is that it's not one way, right? So people are going to be on this ladder at different points, depending on their experiences and who they are. And so people are going to need different elements, uh, depending on where they stand and what rung they're on. Um, and so this is really just a framework for you to think about how you're structuring your messages and your plans and your communications um, as you're developing them and as you're trying to uh, bring people on board. Uh, and then there's like when you actually get into producing some of this stuff, um, and this might just be like whether you're trying to promote a plan on social media or uh, do some education. Uh, in the in the neighborhood, um, or um, with the plans themselves, whether it's long form or short form, context is really important, right? So, like, what is the situation the person is in when they're receiving or consuming your message? Um, so maybe they're on their commute and they're super busy and distracted, and they have like really poor internet access, and they can't sit there and watch a you know um, six minute video with uh, a really important soundtrack because they don't have their headphones or they're on you know, the um, bar or whatever. Um, uh, or maybe they're sitting at home and they're like actually researching an issue and are in, like able and willing to sit down and read a longer report and really dig in. Um, and so understanding what context they're in when they're consuming that content will help you decide what format makes the most sense for it. Um, and then voice and tone is sometimes one we get a little hung up in. Um, <laughs> so uh, when we think about voice and tone, it's really sort of our personalities, right? So uh, voice is like who you are as a person and how you communicate with people in general. And like, you've got that one friend that's always really bubbly and excited and happy to see everyone. And you know, she's always gonna be super positive. And you've got that other friend who's always really serious and will break down issues and be able to, you know, uh, give you all the subtext and everything. And, um, and that stuff tends to be consistent with people. Like their personalities tend to stay pretty consistent. Whereas tone, comes and goes depending on the situation. It changes depending on the context and the moment you're in. Um, and so when we're thinking about this in terms of like talking about our work, we really wanna ask ourselves questions like whose voice are we using? What do we, you know, when we say we, if we're talking in the first person, who are, who are we assuming is included in that? Um, when we talk about community, what does that actually mean to different people? Um, and, um, and when we think about tone and like the subject matter, when does it make sense for us to be celebratory or funny or serious? Um, like this meme is a great example, I feel like, of the, the Bay Area stages of life where you've got, you know, the baby learning to crawl, learning to speak. And then as they grow up, they learn to say hecka, and then they start saying hella. And then by the time you're adulting, you're complaining about the rent. 
And this makes a really very specific point about Bay Area economy, but it does it in a way that's funny and that everybody can relate to and is more lighthearted. And that's not always appropriate depending on the subject or the context. You know, if you're developing a city plan, you're not going to load it full of memes. But if you're creating social media content or if you're, you know, uh, um, in a conversation or uh, you're, you know, giving a presentation, um, then there may, and, and if, and depending on your audience, there may be room for some of that levity and that may help connect with people. It may help get some of those sort of foundational ideas, those key takeaways, that one big thing across more quickly for them. Um, so that's like a super rushed run through of just some high level uh, framework for how you think about talking about this work. Um, we put together a few resources. We'll continue to build these out um, throughout the, the program, um, but you can lean on woeip.org um, for language about the work and the methodology um, that you'll be using. Um, and we've got a really rough sort of set of brand guidelines that just has some links to the logos and some colors and imagery, like resources for images, free imagery you might be able to use. Um, and then this spreadsheet, uh, which is, uh, we just started a collection of like cool social media examples uh, for inspiration that you might use as you're starting to get into the communication side of your planning. Um, and this is editable by anybody. So with this link, you should be able to get in there and just add your own as you come across them. Um, and you should feel free to share out so that everybody can, can benefit from that. Um, so that was super quick. Um, I probably rushed through a little bit of it, um, but I want to pause and, and I, I see the chat kind of blew up. Um, I'll go ahead and stop sharing uh, and we can maybe ask some questions. And I know that um, uh, I know that um, Phoenix also has some some additional stuff to share. Yeah, the mutual aid thing I think is um, has been really amazing and inspiring to see, and and I think a lot of that was actually some of that was really reflected in some of the work that was shared earlier in some of these earlier presentations too. Does anybody have any questions? And Phoenix, I don't know if you want to share your bit and if it makes sense to sort of. Um, Go into it from there. Yeah, if any, if there are no more questions, uh, I'm going to go into talking a little bit about your sort of uh, expectations around communications for uh, the West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project. So when we, when I designed this project, uh, the idea was that, um, you know, we, we have some communications channels, we have some social media, but they haven't really been developed much. One, one of the issues is we don't have a dedicated person who uh, is working on communications uh, and social media. Um, and so we thought we could use the cohort as a way to kind of get the word out more about these issues. Um, I just wanted to go into just showing you what we have available and see where it's at. So you can see this right here is, can you see this? This is our Instagram right here. We have a whopping 129 followers and only just 13 posts. This, this I started this at the beginning of the year. We started out with some air quality maps, some of the maps that I showed you today. I did a live uh, talking about the Shoreline Leadership Academy, more maps, little uh, congratulations for Miss Margaret, and then a bunch of um, advertising for the Shoreline Leadership Academy. And then most recently we put out some posts about what you guys did last Saturday I and mean, the Saturday before this. And uh, even just posting a little bit about you guys has gotten us followers. And so we, we really wanna kind of expand upon this with content that you all create uh, that can get people's attention, talk to them about the things that you're learning about and really be innovative um, to educate the public. Uh, we have a Twitter account, West Oakland EIP, but this is really, we have five followers total. So 
helping with getting this going would be uh, really helpful as well for us to do it. Um, we'd love to have you guys like send us guest tweets, maybe live tweet one of the, the things that we're working on. Um, and then we'll go to our West Oakland Facebook page, which is also a very new Facebook page. It only has a couple posts on it. I posted this morning about the last week. Uh, we should be going, we should be live on uh, Facebook now. So there's gonna be the live videos, but there's really just a little bit in our social media that we put out there. Now, in terms of communications, do this little. We wanted to offer you a menu of options that you could uh, use. So, you know, we saw the Instagram and Facebook and um, and Twitter that we had here. So we put this into sort of easy things that you can do with your communications times, medium things and hard things to do, things that might take more time. And also I, sh I should say that throughout this, uh, this academy, we're gonna have opportunities come up for things that you can join on in uh, with other organizations as well. But so on the easy side, you can do just a simple Instagram post with copy. Uh, you can create an Instagram story for us. You can create a Facebook post with a picture and copy for us, a Snapchat post, LinkedIn post, Nextdoor, Twitter, or live tweet something. On the medium hot side, we have that you could create TikTok videos, and this could be for our communications or for your own. Just anything to get the word out to, to people. A Medium article, an IG or a Facebook Live, um, a Clubhouse talk. I don't know if you guys have used Clubhouse, but Clubhouse is a, a app that allows you to create your own sort of lectures and, and put it out to a group of people who might be interested. You can create a blog post. You can create memes. You can create video testimonials, or you can do public comment at meetings. But also included here, like uh, two of our uh, participants actually went to the Middle Harbor Shoreline Park uh, planning meeting and and uh, created some information from that. So like there's going to be a lot of opportunities for meetings that you can go to and like report back on through, uh, you know, either through, you know, one of these areas and talk to the greater community about the, the things that you're learning about. And then on the hard part, you could create a press release and try to get some earned media. So, you know, if you sent something out to like KQED, I sent a press release out to KQED, maybe they would pick up the story. Uh, you can write an op-ed. Uh, you can create a YouTube video about uh, the shoreline. Um, Cal Academy, who's one of the partners that we're gonna be working with has, has a program called the Breakfast Club and they are going to be offering up to us that we can do a session on the Breakfast Club. It's sort of like a podcast and like morning talk show kind of thing. And you could be a guest uh, on, on the Breakfast Club and talk about that, uh, talk about what you're learning. Uh, the Exploratorium who is gonna be here today, they weren't able to show up today, but they're gonna come a little bit later to talk more about this opportunity, but they have something that they call an after dark, which is usually on Thursdays and they allow people to come and do like panel discussions or talks about something. And so we're gonna work and partner with them so that you guys could be on one of their after darks or um, they also have the opportunity if you want to, to, um, to create videos online for uh, talking about what you're learning here. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know what a story map is. It's a, a this a story map is a program where you can create uh, these really intricate like maps. It's like a it's a it's a type of presentation, but it goes through like a map um, with words attached to it and pictures, and it's really graphically very interesting. Um, you can create a story map. You can create an infographic, or for example, you can get an article in a local newsletter. Maybe you know about uh, your church has a newsletter that goes out to 200 people or, or maybe your mosque or your synagogue. If you get an article in that, um, 
newsletter, then that counts as your work as well. So we really want you to just get the word out through any way you, you, you can to the greater community. And that can be using our social media, your own social media, or other communications tools that you know about in the community. So this is, sorry, I didn't talk to you. This was made by Andrea after they went to the Middle Harbor Shoreline Park Master Plan and Management Plan update. And it's just a, a nice little addition to their story where they, they thank us, thank you for doing that, um, for the opportunity. They talked about what are the uh, major issues regarding the shoreline and list those out. Uh, they put together the park's location, uh, major assets, and some of the goals and posted that on their story. So I thought this was a really great example of what you guys could do um, at, with your time working on communications. And just talking about, you know, just went through some content guidelines. I wanted to add some additional ones. I would say bonus points if you can create something in a language commonly spoken in, in Oakland. So if you speak Spanish, Chinese, Vietnamese, or, you know, any other language that's commonly spoken in Oakland and can get the word out to uh, a community that may, maybe is not normally marketed to or don't, doesn't normally get to get information about this sort of stuff. You know, um, our, uh, you know, non-English speakers often don't get all the information that you are getting access to. And we actually chose a lot of you specifically, not just because of this, but, um, you know, we, we gave extra points for people who had language abilities so that we could have people create things in different languages. Um, we really want you to think about informing people about what the Oakland Shoreline Academy is and what you have learned. So if there's like a really great takeaway, something that you felt really excited about from today that you feel like you want the greater community to know about, you know, we want you to teach the community about, about that. Um, make sure you go across ec economic, the, the pillars that we're looking at, economic, recreational, climate adaptation, restoration, and access. Uh, kind of in, engage all of those aspects. Uh, you can highlight each part of the shoreline. So, you know, talking about the difference between Judge John Sutter and next week we're going to go to uh, Middle Harbor Shoreline, MLK Park. Um, you maybe start putting out your ideas for what you think should happen on the shoreline. Like even before you're getting your plan going, you can start getting the community hyped about what, what you think the ideas are. You can actually put out there that may, maybe you have an idea and get people to start voting on it and get the community engaged that way. Um, you want, we want you to illustrate the learnings you've had on history tools, agency problems and solutions. Make sure to keep it really simple and I, I, digestible and give really personal testimonies for what you're working on. So part of this as we're going along is that we want to train you on um, different communications tools and make you better at communications as we go along. And we have some things kind of planned out, but we also want to hear from you. What do you want to get trained on? Uh, what do you want to learn about and how do you want to uh, better your communication skills? So I'm going to put, there's two, two polls I'm going to put up here. The first one, we'll start out. So just says, what kind of communic communications trainings are you interested in? And click all of them that apply. And then if you have another communications training um, that you are interested in that's not listed here, go ahead and put that in the chat. I'll also just step in it real quick and mention that um, Phoenix and I are going to be planning out, uh, we'll, we'll create a web page on woeip.org for you all so that there's like a place you can go to actually access all of these resources that we're sharing. Um, and that'll include the recordings for the sessions and all of that stuff. So we'll get that online uh, over the course of the program so you have a place to reference um, and we can hopefully create some shared folders maybe so we can actually um, cross pollinate the content um, and, and be able to draw on each other's work.
Ooh, facilitation, that's a good one. Yeah, let's see. Could sweet. Hmm, that's a good one too. Yeah, I did want to share some examples after this. So just in a second. I wanted to let's see. Okay. Oh, so it looks like we got a lot. Um going to end the poll here and share with you all. So it looks like we got kind of uh even all along the way uh communications tools using instagram TikTok, how to write a press release uh less of you interested in learning a message but uh, a lot of folks who want to learn how to do a video and the other in the chat we got hood suite training on hood suite training on facilitation of community listening sessions and facilitation of community engagement events i'm gonna download that Okay, and I have one more poll before we go. Let's see. So this next one is which platforms are you most interested in? You can only select one. Oh, you time. can only select one. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, I edited that wrong. Hold on. Uh, let me see if I can end the poll and re and edit it. Oh, nope, because I launched it, it's already in. Okay, can you just put it into the chat, which ones you're interested in? I'll relaunch it so you can see. Okay, so from what we're seeing is Facebook, Story Maps, IG are kind of the most popular, TikToks in there as well. Great. And Hannah put in Hootsuite, which is a great one. Okay. Phoenix, when you're talking about story maps, are you talking about the ArcGIS story maps? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I wanted to show some examples of some folks that uh, we really like. 
but uh, whose um, who's social media we really like to give some of the examples. First, Kita, you have uh, an example from something that you posted. Do you wanna share that with folks? Yes, sure. So yeah, I just wanna share with y'all my stories. Um, I created, a, what is it called? Um, I forgot, on Instagram. Hold on, what is that called again? Let me look at it real quick. Um, the archive stories, I forgot. Oh, highlights, dang, I'm like, dang, I forgot the terminology. Yeah, so I created a highlight for the Oakland Shoreline Leadership Academy on my Instagram page so that every time I post stories, I'll just add them all to this archive. <clears throat> and so, yeah, I just want to share with y'all when I, I posted y'all. <laughs> Each other and come together and plan for our environment, in particular in this case, our shoreline. Hey, same squad, same squad, same squad. Drop top, coop, dodge, train, drops. Big bad plays on FaceTime. Squad ain't with me, then it ain't right. Same squad, same squad, same squad. Drop top, coop, dodge, right now is not natural if you want to call it that. This Just sharing a little bit of uh, philosophy behind my uh, stories or whatnot. I don't really never post right at the moment because I try to put more attention to it or whatnot. But yeah, I just try to post people. A lot of people have not seen the shoreline. So like just crisp, nice picture, pictures of them like really attracts people. People really love the sto that story um, thread when I shared it and wanted to know what was going on. It was actually a random person, I don't know if y'all had noticed, that followed us and on, the, on, the third, on the 10th and was like, wanted to be a part of the training or whatnot and learn more. But uh, yeah, just wanted to share, just how to, you know, try to make it relevant to your audience. Like we trying to get this information across to people that you know or whatnot and trying to yeah, translate it. So just um, a way to be creative. And then I have one more for TikTok, uh, the one I showed you, uh, one second. So this one is not necessarily about the shoreline, but it's about, again, planning, problem solving, asking a question, and then, you know, leading into problem solving. It's a little low, so I'm gonna have to talk it through. Just gonna start over. He said, who I did was to put a merry-go-round next to the slaughterhouse. I watch Hey Arnold a lot. I've been binge watching and like, it's a lot of references to urban planning and just urban living. And so, you know, people at my age, millennials trying to, trying to teach them about planning. Like, like we all love Hey Arnold, most of us. So it's just my way of trying to get across the message in a relevant way. So yeah, they had, they, they saw, had made an observation. You feel me? It's this meat place next to this nice, you know, um, carnival or whatever. Like who decided to do that? Then you see this white man come. <laughs> you see this white man come walk by. Go making transactions again with another white man. So I just put, you know, that's who normally does find me. Just trying to drop a little information real quick. You know, here's the caption. You add some different tags to get different audiences to come that way. But um, yes, just wanted to show y'all just what you can do. Uh, with current media, current 
how you can yeah whatever you do in your regular life you can use it as content great thank you and i wanted to just share a couple of folks a couple of things that i liked like in terms of social media so um i work uh, also for the mycelium youth network uh, and I created an article that was like nine tips for, for fire season and our social media coordinator turned it into this. So it has a really cool little intro, nine tips for fire season. And then as you scroll through, she has it set up. Each tip is just like a, a little blurb here. So N95 mask, uh, air filter, lung support so this instagram way of just scrolling through to different panels that you make is a really good way to take like complex lists of, of information and like put it down into more digestible um ways to to uh to take it in so there's that one i was looking at uh communities for a better environment oh, this they do a similar thing so this was really simply done, but this is for immediate release. Alameda County, County sale of Coliseum to Oakland A's violates California law. And as you go through, it's just like really simply laid out. Alameda County is facing a lawsuit from the community around the Coliseum, which the county committed to sell to Fisher owned Oakland Athletics without first offering the land for affordable housing uh, after months of threatening to leave. And it goes through, you know, there's like nine slides of this, but it's like just really simple way to learn about the issues, just go through the slides and learn slide by slide. And then this one, Alexis Nicole, I don't know if you guys know Black Forager, but she's right now one of my favorites in terms of it. And she does these cute videos. This is Spurge and it's a dangerous plant to eat. But right next to it is purslane, which is a delicious veggie. But here's an easy way to tell them apart. Spurge leaks milky sap when you break it. Look at that. Focus, yeah. And tasty succulent purslane does not. I'm going to go make some purslane kimchi. Happy snacking. Don't die. Vi OK. That's great, <laughs> sir. So I love it. All, all her videos are like that. They're very short. They, you know, very kind of choppy. She always, she always sings in, in some of them. That's sort of her signature thing. And she's just very much herself uh, in the video. So, um, yeah, so that's sort of just the, the gist of it. Do folks have comments or questions? Hire, hire your uh, <laughs> extrovert friends to do it for you if you're introvert. <laughs> yes. Yes. I want. I also want to uh, say that Veronica and Sonia are going to be helping me sort of gather things and decide how to put 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 them out. So um, yeah, if you can, if you want to send, you can send your stuff to me, or you can also send it to Veronica, and we're going to be working together to create stuff and and put it out and tag you guys and all of that. Hey, quick question. Do we have hashtags that we can use so we can create like a picture pool? Yeah. So I had come up with the hashtag Osla 2021, but I'm also open to other other hashtags. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just going to say to, um, I think it was Veronica, I think it was your point about uh, introvert versus extrovert. Uh, the nice thing about this approach is that it kind of, you can, you don't necessarily have to be an extrovert. You don't even have to be on camera, right? Like some of the stuff that Phoenix shares, some of those examples are really just text and uh, sort of putting facts together in the right way, breaking things down. So they're simple and digestible. Um, and so, you know, embrace your, like Phoenix said, embrace who you are and what works for you. Um, and, you know, that's how you get your voice heard is, is really just being authentic to yourself. Oh, you want to know about hashtags. So hashtags are how you kind of organize things on Instagram. So if you hashtag something under the hashtag Osla 2021, then anyone can look up that hashtag and find every picture that has that hashtag on it. 
So if we all use the same hashtag, then we can all make sure that the pictures are all in one place and easily searchable. Okay. Okay, and we should go. It sounds like folks want an Instagram training, want to are interested in that. So we can go more into that as we go along. Any other questions before we transition? Okay, I'm going to stop the recording then. And uh,